Welcome to The Exclusive. I'm your host, Sharon Tharp. I'm back here with an episode six recap for The Traders US season two, and I'm joined by my friend, Big Brother winner, and a fan of The Traders, Andy Heron. How are you doing today? I'm so good, Sharon. I'm so happy that I'm now your friend. That makes me so happy. I mean... Um, I, I'm so thrilled to be here. Uh, yeah, I'm so excited. Andy, I'm still recovering. I wore black for Dan's funeral because I'm really <laughs> sad. But what what an amazing hour, 40 minutes of television, right? I agree. Like, oh, all right. So usually I walk through the episode, but guys, I'm not going to bury the lead here. Let's just dive into it. Dan goes out, which, you know, I, I don't know how you feel, Andy, but like, I kind of felt like he wasn't long for the game. And I think you know, people have been very critical and we could talk about, you know, sort of the mistakes he went, he, he did, but, um, but yeah, I, I'm bummed to see him go, but like, I also sort of like knew it was coming. I don't know how well, you felt. I mean, I will absolutely give this to Dan. Dan makes good TV. And so it's fun to have Dan on any show. I'm sorry. The traders was just not for Dan. I think like, it's just like, he did not play well. Like, it's just like, admit it people like it's like you can still love him on big brother you can still think he has such a great big brother legacy he was a flop on the traders i'm sorry just like <laughs> flop after flop after flop move i saw a tweet someone was just like someone was like like enter contestant's name like dan how are you going to prove to me at the, like the round table that you're not a trader dan i have a huge like plan you'll see you'll see and then dan at the round table i'm not a trader like it's just like Give us something. It was like the epitome of Go Girl, give us nothing. And it's like, I feel like he would talk like a couple weeks ago. He was like, you like you haven't seen what I've got yet. And then it was just like, no, Janelle just also named CT and Sandra. And that's the only reason you even lasted this week. It's just I, like he needed to switch up his tactics. And he also, one of his big flaws is underestimating the people that he's playing with. And it's just like okay, I don't think you really need to underestimate when you're on Big Brother 14 and you're playing against like Chef Joe and Jojo and like Jen City. <laughs> but he absolutely underestimated a bunch of the people in this game. I think that a lot of them are smarter than he gave them credit for. Um, and yet again, like I say he's a flop in the traders, which I think he is. Please don't come for me. I still think he is great at Big Brother. So I'm just like, and it's it's been funny. My friends who didn't watch his seasons of Big Brother they've been asking me about him. Like they've been like, Oh, like what is with this guy that won big brother twice? He's such a flop. And I'm like, Ugh. it's like you it's it, they're different games, you know? Yeah. And the other funny thing that I wanted to say is like going into this round table, knowing Dan, like when he was like, okay, everyone raise your hand. If I, if I were there, I would have truly been like, no, like I would have been like, shut up. We are not doing this. You're out. Like I would just be like, everyone, this is, thing and it's like when he started doing it I was like so help me God if this works <laughs> like I was like I'm gonna lose my mind um and so yet again I'm sad to see him go but I was also kind of it was thrilling to watch him take a shot and to like not have it like land and especially against Phaedra who I think is playing really well um it was I'm, I'm really rambling it was just so fun no I mean we're gonna get into it all but yeah my eulogy for Dan is essentially this like I agree this wasn't necessarily his game or he didn't approach it the right way and then right. sort of made several mistakes. I'm also in the camp of like, it doesn't affect his big brother legacy for me. No. Like he's still my favorite player. Everyone knows this. I still think they're very different games. Just like, you know, Sari was a master trader, right. Right. Um, but you know, wasn't as good at other, whatever. So yeah, I think no, I totally agree. And it's like, <laughs> I feel like the Big Brother fans, I've already seen tweets being like, don't you dare start to come for Dan and his legacy if he flops on the traders. And it's like, he's going to be fine among Big Brother fans. Everyone still loves him. I mean, if anything, I truly feel like he could go on every show and flop and Nicole Franzel could go on every show and win. And people would still just be like, Dan's the better player. Like, it's like Big Brother mm -hmm. fans truly just have it in their mind that Dan is like the best of all time. And so what I'm saying is, I think he has nothing to worry about in terms of how Big Brother fans will perceive it. <laughs> yeah, well, let's hope. I, yeah, I hope they don't they don't come from too much. But I also understand the criticism of people who who aren't familiar with his Big Brother yeah. game. Like, yeah, he did come off a little boring. I thought he was really fun in this episode specifically, but yeah. like, there were definitely moments like earlier, and I'm like, you're not really giving us much, Dan. But well, it's like I I can't say too much about like like I can't be like he's boring because I was boring when I was on Big Brother, and so it's like I'm not the person that can really say much about this. Um, but like I said, it's just it's different skill sets for different games, and I just feel like he came into this 
like he truly just made bad move after bad move after bad move and it was actually kind of shocking to watch yeah so one the first thing i want to uh, talk about is you know I, I i understand why he wanted to like make his big move now finally play aggressive definitely was too late yeah also and and rachel riley is the one that convinced me of this like he should have went for Parv. Sure. I, yes. What happened there? Why even, Phaedra? Even when you think like that, because I think, of course, in his head, he was like, if this works and I suss out Phaedra, everyone's going to trust me. Like, everyone's going to be like, oh, my God, Dan, like, he was sat back, he was sitting back and he was listening and he got this trailer that no one saw. But it's like, number one, you are, it's too late. It's like everyone already suspects you. Number two, Phaedra is playing so well that nobody suspects Phaedra. And it's like, if, like, going into this, like I said, it's like, if it, if it's going to be you or Parvati, girl, you got to go after Parvati. It's just like, and even his vote for Phaedra, it's like, what are you doing? Like, even down to his vote, I was just like, girl, if even if you think that people are going to be voting for, Par for Parvati, you took that Phaedra shot and no one went with it, vote for Parvati. I know. I didn't understand that either because... Even again, it could have come. Even if you thought you were going home, it could have come come down to a few votes. Exactly. And like, I mean, I really did think that, like, when Peter voted for Parvati, I was like, oh, like the Peter Bergie traditional alliance is all going to vote for Parvati, and I was like, oh my god, Dan's going to stay possibly. And it's like, god here. And it's like, if Dan, like, even that was an inkling, no one went for the Phaedra thing. Why did he vote for Phaedra? I think he thought it was going to land differently, and I actually did didn't mind his pitch about Phaedra until he started getting to the breakfast reactions and Kate, Kate was not his friend. And she's no. like, what are you talking about? I mean, that's and the thing. It's like, I often say too, and it's like, it's easier said in hindsight. I have always, even when I watched him on 14, I respect what he does. It doesn't land with me. I think that his tactics mm. are like, to me, they are transparent. And it's like, I feel like he's playing with people like that. Like, it's like, if Dan had been on my season of Big Brother, I really do think like Amanda and Helen and I would have been like, what is with this guy that's like not giving us very much? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's like, when you're playing with people that can suss that out, it's like, once you smell that on someone, it's like blood in the water and there's not a lot of coming back from it. Like, I think I said this to you before, it's like Nick Yuhas on my season, okay. I do think tried to play like Dan. And it's like, we all smell that he would give us nothing. Like he would just be like, he would be like, I don't know. Like, I'm just, I'm just like here sleeping all the time. And we were all just like, absolutely not. And we like, mm -hmm. and it's like, he was forming an alliance without any of us and like trying to be a mastermind. And it's like, when you're playing with people like that, if they can smell it out and you're not, and Dan didn't give them anything to like prove that he wasn't, you know? I, I just feel like Peter and Ber like there were a few people that were so on to Parv. Right. That, and he just, ch I, and I, I get why he also wanted to wait to the round table, but he should, cause he didn't want Parv to find out or Phaedra to find out. But like, you got to start planting those seeds earlier. Because exactly. There's, you know, Phaedra has too many friends there. Like there was just a Why lot of creepy cat is just sitting on the story. He's <laughs> watching us. Yeah. Keep going. No, I'm sorry. no, no. Um, all right. Yeah. So that was definitely, uh, a mistake. Um, what else happened? Oh my God. There was so much. Phaedra is also livid by the way. Um, I mean, Phaedra, like I said, it's like he underestimated Phaedra for sure. It's like, she is going, she said exactly the right stuff. Like, it's like he came for her. And like, I, like I said, I, I totally understand where he was coming from. If it had worked, I think it would have made him look really good. Yeah. Um, but it was against Phaedra who outplayed him. And the other part of it was Phaedra was not told about that shield thing. And so that right. was big for right. Peter's group. And right. so you had to do Parv at that point. I mean, because... that was another crazy bad move on Dan's part. It's like Parvati clocked that so fast. Mm. Like literally without blinking, Parvati was just like, oh, so Peter's lying to us. And it's like, Dan, oh, like, how did you not, like, I can't believe he tried to kill Bergy. It's just, it was a lot of bad choices. Yeah. And, and the thing I do like about Dan is that he is a good sport and absolutely. It's like, and I, I, do you know, I don't that. want Dan stands to come for me because I still think Dan is one of the I'm best the, ever play big brother. I'm the biggest Dan stand. Yeah. And, and, you just, and, you just end the interview. You tell me to fuck <laughs> off and like hang up. Um, no, but it's like, I completely agree the way that Dan exited. I think that, I mean, I think that Dan is like a good guy. Um, and I, he had a very good, like, he was a very good sport about it. I like, can't say that about, I think, I feel like I would probably leave like yelling at people and mad. Me too. So. I'm too emotional for that. But like, 
It, I will say, I, I heard, I don't know if this is true, but that Phaedra doesn't follow Dan or something. So, so I think there's still a little heat okay. there. Um, I'm not sure. But that's funny. I mean, that's, that's <laughs> funny and it kind of checks out, but uh, that's funny. Yeah. So, and I also like that, you know, he said, he was like, maybe I shouldn't have gone after an elegant lawyer. And I'm like, all right, Dan, I see what you're doing. Like he, yeah. he, he tries to make a man. I don't think he's just trying to have enemies and he knows he like. It was funny, like, when he said, I shouldn't have gone after an elegant lawyer, I was like, did he mean eloquent? And then I was like, I think either word could fit. Like, it's like, Phaedra is both elegant and eloquent, so. What did you think, I guess, yeah, any any other thoughts about his pitch about Phaedra? I mean, I just thought it was the wrong move. He should have absolutely gone after Parvati. Okay, so so leading up to the round table, um, it's obvious, like I said, it's obviously clearly Dan versus Par, which is another thing where I'm like, What's going on here? And I think Parv, like they were always together and that also doesn't help Parv now that Dan was a traitor. So like, there's just so many things that Parv is doing that I think are great. And then there, I'm also just like, continue to be worried about her just because of how she's I'm worried of. about her too. I still think she, I mean, I think she's got a like an uphill battle ahead of her. Although like, I mean, I won't spoil the end of the episode yet, but it's like, I do think she has an uphill battle. I do think that she, in moments where she was also go girl, give us nothing. Like, it's just like, come on. But I still think she's play, she played better than Dan. Like, I do think if one of them deserved to go, it was. Yeah. As a, as a faithful, like you would, you would be throwing out names and scenarios and neither of them were. No. Really. It, and that's the problem. If I were, if I were a traitor, I would literally just erase my brain and be like, you're a faithful. Like yes. I would be like, act, act, you have forgotten that you're a traitor. Act like you're a faithful. Like, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like I always, I also was talking to a friend about, um, oh my God, who was the fighter that Deontay, how he was like crying and like threatening to quit. And then, I mean, he did quit, but I was like, if I were playing and I were a traitor, I would just cry and threaten to quit all the time. Like after all of the managements, mm -hmm. um, because I'd be like, that would like, like, it's like nobody thought he was, you know what I'm saying? I would truly act like it was like, really draining me and like like taking everything like oh, like all of my like will to play was gone so that no one would suspect me oh my gosh that that could work but that like i feel like cody was so like that that like people yeah. are like so like, it depends on the person probably True. but um okay I mean, so I, I do think that i could like if i get in there with some housewives i think like my power is like winning over women like that yeah. i think i could like weasel my way in um, like Cody loves his bros. And so it's like, he's never going to gel super well with all the women. I think I could. Yeah. I said that about Dan too. I was like, I mean, we didn't see a lot of stuff, but I'm like, right. my first thing, if there are four housewives in there for like, a, like strong ass women who are like vocal, like a Larsa or even like an yeah. MJ, I'd be sucking up to them. Absolutely. <laughs> like Sandra's doing basically. Yeah. Yes. I think, I think, I mean, I'm sure we'll probably get to this, but Sandra is my girl. And I think that she is someone who is proving that she is good at both survivor and the traders. I think she is playing. So she's going to get like banished tonight or something. But I know, right. I think she's playing <laughs> so well. Well, let me ask you this because they didn't, they haven't shown it, but I was convinced. Well, no, even Janelle said that she knew pretty much the whole time Dan was going they yeah. don't show it in the show, like that meta sort of game, like, oh, I know he's a traitor, but I'm going to keep him around. I feel like Sandra knows, has has known Parv's a traitor for a while. Like, like yep. If Tonight I, we if, finally saw it. <laughs> if I, for example, like Sandra and Parvati, like if I, if I were on the traitors with like Derek from Big Brother 16 and I'm a faithful, I would be like, Derek is a traitor. Like I would be like, one of us is going to be a traitor. And if it's not me, it's absolutely him. Yep. And then like, I do think that like one third of every traitor's cast is incapable of being a traitor. Like, I just do not think that they have it in them to be oh, one. 100%. And so it's like, if I'm in there with another big like schemer from Big Brother, like I said, and I'm a faithful, I would be like, well, we know who one of the traitors is. Right. Like there's always like the Kevins and the Burgies who are maybe good faithful, but could never be traitors. No wow. offense. Right. I mean, and it's like, they're fun to have in there because they throw chaos into everything. Like you need them. And like, you don't just want a bunch of game bots. You want the people like Kevin who like is completely wrong all the time, but like vocal and wrong, which is fine. Yeah. Yes. He's messy sometimes. But also like being a faithful sucks. My God, it is so hard and so stacked against you. Like, I it's know. like, I, I, I still vacillate on like what I think is the best faithful game to play. And I do think that Sandra is like the best example of it right now. Like being so like 
I am banishing you because here is all of the evidence presented against you and that's why. And also like laying under the radar, you know, like. She's it, also playing the like anybody but me still because yes. she she's just going with the, the crowd. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which is great. No, it, um, it is. She, uh, I love her so much. I know. The Bergy block, we said, bad move from Dan, should have cut and listened to Parv. I think that was the first mistake of this episode, at least. Yes, and that's obviously. why I also was like, if one of them is going to get banished, just based on how they played, it should be Dan. Like, it's like, Parv, he clapped that. True. And it would be annoying if, like, she went home because of it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, Peter, good play. I thought that was yeah. smart. I think, you know, the S.H.I.E.L.D. strategy... The telling was smart. The shield strategy has been used before, so it's not as like, wow, like kind of don't tell anyone right. who has the shield that's been used before, but like telling three people like, okay, good on you, Peter. So he was all excited about that. Yeah. But Dan has a conversation with Peter and he's like, okay, yeah, it's time to be aggressive. I need to turn my game on. It's like not working. And you could just tell Peter's like, Bro, I still think it's you. No, and I like I said, I liked seeing that because if I played yes. with Dan, I would sit there and be like, uh-huh. And I would be like, it's you. It's definitely you. Yeah. Um, so we have the mission, which I'm pretty much going to skip over because I think it's irrelevant. I don't I, Sharon, I mean, I <laughs> love the this point? show with all my heart. It is like the highlight. Of, I don't know if that was, this, how sad this sounds. It's like the highlight of my week, but... I think that the challenges are like, I, I actually thought the funeral challenge and then was what, was, what was last week's? I thought last week's was kind of fun too. Oh, the birds. Like that was silly. Yeah. But it's like the challenges are like, I'm doing this podcast with you. So I sat there and watched it, but my finger was like trembling over the fast forward button. I was just like, I don't care. I tried so hard not to fast forward. Um, yeah. And really the only things I caught were like, the other funny part, if you actually think about it, is like, so they're working for $20,000 and Kate's like, I know way better ways right. to make $20,000. Or <laughs> Trishel, Trishel just having superhuman strength and like catapulting yourself across that stream to get the box. Like, I like that too. Trishel's impressing me a lot. Actually. Okay. Yes. Like, I think like, I have complex thoughts about this and it's just like, after the peppermint stuff, which I did not love, yeah. like so many people have been like, she's so dumb, we hate her. And it's like, it seems like her and Peppermint are fine. Like, it's like, I hate when people on the internet try to like come for someone who isn't their enemy. It's like, I'm sure, like, sure, it was like annoying and problem and like, but I don't even want to say problematic because like, as everyone has said, like you go off such little cues at the beginning. Yeah. Peppermint like, did not do herself favors when she called herself a traitor, but still it was not great to watch. But yeah. it seems like they're fine. Trishelle like apologized online. It's like, what do people want from her? It's just like, when someone does something like that and they say they're sorry and they're looking for room to grow, I don't understand dogpiling on them like people have been doing to her. And I think that she is also pretty good at the game. Like, as we saw tonight, I think that there's a lot of, like, smart, strategic prowess in her. Um, yeah. yeah. No, I agree. I think she's getting death threats. It's it's bad. Um, well, it's so... like people, people were bringing up, like, her fight with Anissa from years ago, and it's like, she has a history of this. And it's like, number one, like, oh, she fights with like everybody on these shows. Yeah. And her and Anissa have like, a, if you actually research it, her and Anissa had like a long talk and she apologized and they're fine too. And so, like I said, when people like, I don't understand when the internet or Twitter especially comes for someone who's like on your side. It's like, I don't think that Trishelle is an enemy. Yeah. And sure, she might have like some growing to do and some learning to do, but she seems willing to do it. And so it's like, shut up, like, let her, like, like I said, she's, there are bigger fights to, bigger battles to fight than against Trishel, who is like on your side. Yeah. And I think multiple things could be true at once. Like, yeah. I think if, if, if Trishel, even if the optics, she didn't realize or whatever, like, that is stuff that's important for her to know. Absolutely. But like, but like yeah, like giving her death threats is, come on guys. And like, it's like, and, and again, it's like, I do think there were probably some bi some biases in there. but That then, she like, didn't maybe know. Like, yeah, who knows? Right. Exactly. But she's like, hey, I'm listening and I'm learning. And that's what, what, when someone fucks up and they act like that, I'm just like, I'm willing to like show you grace. It's like, you are willing to like learn and change. And it's just like, I don't understand. Like if she were to double down or if she were to ignore it, I can understand people being mad, but she's been like apologizing and saying that like, She's learned from it. And so it's like, move on. Like there are bigger yeah. fights to fight. Going back to like, just before the round table, what did you think about like sort of Peter's aggressive locking poverty out of the room and getting his little group together? 
I mean, interesting. It's, it, it, it makes for good TV. If I were Parvati, I would be annoyed too. <laughs> yeah. um, but like I said, it's fun. And it's like, I do think that it's like good gameplay. Peter, I think is so sure of all, and he's right. Like, it's like, all His of reads people, are right. All of those people that he wants to be locked in the room with are the people that he should be locked in the room with. And so it's like, he's right. Yeah. Um, I, I did love the interaction between Bergie and Parv. She's like sitting there asking him questions. You can tell he's so nervous. He's like, uh, uh, no, uh, like I yeah, love, was, like Parvati is just, this is also the survivor Parvati no, fan of me. It like, like <laughs> same. I love Parvati. No, Parvati just walked in and was just like, what's like, just boom. Like, what is going on? Tell me everything. Like, why are you acting like this? Why are you being weird? Like, it's like, I love that about Parvati. And this goes to show that, like, Bergie could never be a traitor. Like, it's just, no, yeah. no, no. It's like Cody. They're like golden retrievers. Like, they're not traitors. Right, right. Um, <laughs> so, you know, Dan, before the roundtable, like I said, he wasn't, he kind of planted seeds of, well, planted seeds. He took CT, Peter, and I think Trishel aside, and we're basically like, listen, I know you're probably writing my name down, but, like, hear me out. If I have evidence, whatever. I don't know how much of that was actually true, but again, had he said Parv, I think I think they might have listened. I don't know. Right. I agree. Or at but least yes. could have at least bought. Like it's like yeah. Number one, like even if they're still on to you, you buy yourself a week, and you suss out. It makes you look good because you're like joining everyone and sussing out a traitor. Yep, and He's you not can kind of, exactly, like, exactly. Like he probably could have recovered from that. I don't, but whatever. Um, so yes, you mentioned the let's play a little game. I was shocked that no one shut him down sooner, actually. No, like I said, if I had been there, I would have just been like, absolutely not. We are not doing this. I was like, that's the part of Dan that like, I go so back and forth on it because I was truly just like, I, I told Sharon before we started during the round table, I was watching a link on my computer and I was literally just holding my computer like this, like walking around my apartment pacing, like while I was watching it. And so it makes for good TV, but I think it is so cheesy. Like, it's just like, if I were there, I would just be like, give me a break, man, come on. And so, I mean, it wasn't shut down, but also I feel like it didn't work. And like, that made me happy. I was just like, these people, I was like, I'm going to lose my mind if another room of people like falls for something like this. Yeah. It, again, I, I kind of was in the same boat. I'm like, this is so fun to watch as like, yes. especially as a Dan fan, but like, also like, how is this going to work? And like, as soon as Kate chimed in, I was like, oh, it's over. It's, He's, over. it's not working. Yeah. And then, like I said, Phaedra was just sitting there like, and then I was like, oh, I was like, she is going to let him have it. And then she did. Yeah. What did you think when they were like, you won Big Brother twice? He's like, almost twice. Almost <laughs> twice. <laughs> but that's that's why they left in from the like beginning episode, I guess. Yeah. The first episode where they were like, oh, he won Big Brother twice. And I'm like, why would they leave that in? Because that's factually incorrect. Right, right. But now it's a callback. So it makes more sense. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, and, and Phaedra brought up too, like, again, she was like, ah, no one told me the shield thing. Like, Peter never told me, so how is it me? And I'm like, the whole time I was just like, Dan, why did you not yeah, go for her? Right. It was yeah, so hard. Like, it's, and it's like, I'm sure he had a lot of, like, he had a lot of time to think about it and strategize. And it's like, this is what you came up with? Like, oh. I mean, again, I think parts of it were good. Had he come up and thought, because he, I think he practiced that, I'm assuming. He, like, sure. thought about this. Like, if had he come up with similar points and, like, that structure for Parv, he probably had, would have had a better case. It just, it would have made more sense, and it, I feel like it Absolutely. could have worked. Because I didn't hate his approach. I just think the target was was wrong. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. But also, like, yet again, I get it. Like, it's like, if you're putting yourself in Dan's head, everyone is already on to Parvati. If it works, and he susses out Phaedra, he can be like, see... I told you all I do not miss when I take a shot and bam, like my shot worked. But yeah. 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 And so Dan is banished. Um, we already did talk about it, but I don't know why he threw up the Phaedra vote either. And what? Peter voted for Parv, I guess, just as like a reminder that she's still. So I truly just feel like I was like blacking in and out during the episode because I was like so thrilled and watching it. Peter voted for Parvati. Did anybody else vote for Parvati or was everybody else for Dan? Except for no. Dan voting for Phaedra. I wrote notes, guys. We just watched this like less than an hour ago. But I wrote notes and I think everyone voted for Dan okay. except Peter. Okay. I think, yeah. Um, 
which I loved. I loved John, John's vote was so dramatic. The silent <laughs> slaughter. <laughs> it was very um. It was like this is your fate, and so I was right. like, "Whoa!" It was. It was good. I like John. John. John is non-existent for ninety-nine percent of the episode, and then makes me laugh like one time each episode. And yeah. for that, I'm thankful. Andy, if you were in Dan's position, how? Yeah, I guess how would you approach this differently? If I mean, you, I your name done, was out there and everything, I would you have were... done what he did, but I would have done it to Parvati. Okay. Yeah, I think that's probably the correct. Yeah. Um, I love when, again, I love, not as a Dan fan, but I love Phaedra when she was like, bye. Was like, right. That I was mean, fun. Yeah, she, like, like I said, she was like, it, her reactions were really making me laugh. And I mean, I do think that she has been by far playing the best trader game. Although we got that, like yet again, Trishel, we got that soundbite from Trishel being like, mm, I think that Dan wanted to feed us a trader. Like she gets it. I know that I was just going to bring that up. Trishel, Trishel picked up on it, which well, is like, like, Trishel, Trishel, I feel like has been one to watch because Trishel is like a student of these games. Like, it's like, I know that Trishel is a big brother fan. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that Trishel is a survivor fan. It's like Trishel knows the strategy shows more than people I think realize. Yeah. I don't want to like have a winner pick, but Trishel's up there. I worry that she might get murdered or I guess if, if they like, if they were crude, can we, can we talk about the, yeah, let's just dive into it. We're we're all over. Then I guess nobody gets murdered tonight. And so it's like, yeah, like, uh, but I do, I think Sandra, I mean, Sandra right now still is my winner pick just because I love her so much. Like she's truly like a top three reality contestant ever for me. And I think she's playing really well. Um, but I think Trishelle is playing really well too. Yeah. Um, well, speaking of the recruitment, one, I I don't think this was the case before, but they could the recruit oh, sorry, the recruited person can say no yeah. and just go back to being a faithful, which I don't think was the case before. Man, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest with you, I do not understand the rules of this show like at all. Um like I said, I think it is so horrifically unfair to the faithfuls that yeah. like they get to <laughs> recruit another trader right now. Like it sucks. Um and like I said, like even like at the, at the round tables, like the calling out of traders among traders, I don't really understand all of the logistics of that. Um, like where like, the rules, where the line is, right? Right, right. Like if they can be like, no, literally like we meet at like, you know, like I am a trader, but you are like, if like as Dan's getting voted out, he like, can he not be like Phaedra and Parvati are also traders? Like if you wanted to be really petty, like, you, know, you, you, you just made me think about this because Rachel was telling me, and she's obviously played, but she wasn't a trader. She said she doesn't really know the rules either. But <laughs> I, well, because she wasn't a trader. But I yeah, wonder. That's really who, funny, though. Yeah. yeah. Like, if I let's say I'm let's say I'm Dan and like or like let's say let's just say I'm playing, yeah. and my two traders sell me out, and everyone believes them. On my way out, I'm like, well, they're both these that one and that one are also traders. I'm a trader. I know. Bye. Like. It sort of happened in the UK in the first season a little bit right. toward the end. Um, but you're right, because I wonder, is that why Dan waited for the round table? Did they tell him he can't plant seeds before? Right. I don't know. Because that actually might change things. I can ask him tomorrow. Uh, I'll be talking with him. But like, yeah, like how early can you plant seeds or turn on your traders? Like, right. are there certain words you can't say? Like, I'm interested in that. Yeah. Because doesn't really make sense um Um, but yeah but then also like i think it is so like i said it's so unfair that the traders get to recruit someone like it's like that sucks like that i know well talk me through first the decision from parvati and phaedra to recruit peter i think it's the right i think it's a smart decision i really do it's like everybody trusts peter so much and he's like spearheading like i don't think bergy or john are capable of like playing very well. And so I think the only person you have to worry about sussing out Peter now that he is possibly a traitor is Trishel. Um, and so True. I think it's a good move. True. I think, I think you're right. And then I'm thinking from Peter's perspective, what the right move is, which he talked about. He was like, well, this is one, the smartest thing for the traders think, to do. Yeah. Um, but two, it's easier to play as a trader yeah. But he's in a good spot and he's probably going to get murdered. And he, talk me through, like, I think should Peter. he absolutely should play as a traitor. Yeah. Like, I think he absolutely should take that up. And it's like, think about it. It's like, it, Sand, I feel like the biggest threats to the traitors now will be like Sandra 
Trishel. Like, it's like, I'm sorry, like, does Sheree know where she is? Like, it's just like, <laughs> um, like, she got the shield. Good job, Sheree. <laughs> right. Like, you know, and it's like, Sheree's fun to watch, but it's like, Sheree, John yeah. Bergie, no. MJ, like, has moments, but it's also just like, then she has moments where I'm like, I also don't, I'm not totally sure if you know what's going on. Um, CT like is in with the gamers, but I also do not think that CT really has a gamer's brain. Um, and so I do think if they recruit Peter, it is like the traitor's game to lose. Although I think it is always the traitor's game to lose. I mean, if you think about it, if like everybody just sussed out all the traitors immediately, there would be no show or like, you know what right. I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like the format the foundation of this show is really shaky if you think about it, but still it's so fun. So I don't care. We all say that. We're all like, there's some kinks they still have to work out. Yeah, it's like, it's like, I literally am just like, I literally am like, I am like, I wake up on Thursday mornings, like, the first thought I have upon waking up is, yay, I get to watch the traders. And then I still don't understand, like, how the rules fully work. So. I don't think, uh, yeah, I think there's still some kinks to work out. But... I'm obsessed with you being like, Ra- Rachel played the game and doesn't know how the rules work either. I mean, she, listen, she told me that, but she said it from a faithful's point of view. Yeah, they, I yeah. guess they never told her, like, how the traders, because I'm sure the traders get a rundown of, like, what they can say and what right, they can't, right. and Rachel didn't. So I'd be curious to know, actually, the next person I talk to who was a trader, maybe Dan, I'll ask if he's yeah. allowed to say, because there's got to be rules that, like, you can't I don't do know. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so Peter, how will this work if he says yes? Because now he is going to have to work with Parvati, or at least pretend to work with Parvati and Phaedra, sort of what now he, now he to his group says, oh, I don't, I don't think Parv's a traitor I mean, anymore. I think the move is like, re, like frame someone for doing something and like really get the target off of, like keep your, keep this, keep, like keep the target on Parvati, but just the bullseye is on someone else and Parvati's like over here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, I think that's the move. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, if he declines, which again, I don't, think I, still, I don't understand how that to. works. Yeah. Like what happens if, do they, if he declines? Are they just like, okay, we're killing you? Well, it's bad TV if he declines because no one gets murdered and then he just goes back to being a faithful. So right. like, I'm sure producers are like, no, please. You need to accept this. Right. Right. <laughs> like for, for us, um, I don't know how he's going to be. Parv and him have been going at it. How do you think they'd work together as traders? I mean, I don't, I don't know. They've been going at it, but just kidding. They've been going at it, but also, like, it seems like they're just, like, I, I think they'd be fine. I, I do think that they would work together fine as traders. What do you think about, like, I, I do, Phaedra's playing a great traders game, and part of it, and I wonder if this is, we should be learning this for the next few seasons, she does take a back seat in the turret. Like, she lets other people make the decisions, which usually you'd be like, why would you do that? But it, it's working out for her. I don't know. And again, it's like, no, I totally agree. It's like, just rewire your brain and be like, I'm a faithful. And just as a trader, be like, I don't care. Like, kill whoever. Like, it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just like, none of the, like, even to, even when Dan tried to, like, suss her out, she was just like, like, I'm, I get along with everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just feel like she does, like, nobody is really even onto her whatsoever. So why try to, like, make a, just let, let the other people that are already cooked make the decision. Yeah, I actually do like how she, I thought, again, I don't know Phaedra, but I know housewives can be very dramatic. So I'm thinking when Dan was coming for her, I was actually kind of, I was like, wow, she's pretty still so composed. I'd be like, what are you talking about? Like, I'd be like, re- and she just sat there like, how dare you? And right. I was living for it. I was like, yeah. no. Um, I also love that line where she was like to Parv, she's like, I'm walking into the hospital, but you're in the ICU, baby. Like, <laughs> yes. you, you. <laughs> Or she was like, she was like, thank goodness I'm a Christian woman. I would have ripped his heart out. I was like, yeah. <laughs> like she's so fun. I am obsessed with her. Me too. Um, she's scary. Like she truly scares me. Like it's like I would not want to cross her. So yeah, I did my research a little bit. I knew she was a lawyer at some point, which is like she's already a very like smart woman, but she's also a mortician. Which yeah. I didn't know. Which so she has like these crazy layers to her. But what what a great character. Um, yeah loved her but yeah so what do we think going forward i don't poverty is not long for the game right do we i don't do we think i don't think so no i think do you think among the traders now if peter accepts who will last the longest of the traders i mean it, it just depends on how peter does like it's like we've seen peter is a like 
Peter is a really good faithful, so maybe that means that Peter will be a really good trader, or maybe that means that he only has the skill set to be a faithful and he's going to be a horrible trader. Like Cody was, Cody I think would have been a fantastic faithful, but Cody yeah. was a bad trader, and maybe Peter will be like that too. But Peter seems a little more cunning than Cody, and so uh, we'll see. Yeah, it's also interesting when you're recruited because you already have these relationships that you set up. Right, so you already right. have built in production a little bit. But at the same time, because you're switching to a trader, you have to be very careful not to tip people off that you're Absolutely. acting differently. So it is good and bad for him. Um, but yeah, I, I just... Guess, like, if, if everybody knows that a trader was recruited and he comes back and he's like, I don't know if it's part of any people are going to be like, okay, like... You got recruited, girl. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, because that's the other thing. Don't they say, oh, they must have recruited last night? Yeah, if nobody dies, I'm assuming. Like I said, I don't fully. I watched season one a year ago, and I've consumed 8,000 TV shows since, so I don't really remember. But I'm pretty sure that if, if, if someone is recruited, nobody dies, and they know that someone was recruited, right? Mo yes, yes. I think Alan confirms that, too. Okay. So then at that point, it could be anybody. Yeah. I mean, again, if you think Parv's a fader, uh, a traitor then you should assume that peter was recruited because yeah. they were not friends so there's like oh, yeah that's that's true it's like yeah if i'm playing and i know that someone i would be like i bet it's probably peter like i so yet again like sandra is probably sitting there just like quietly just gonna be like okay like you know yeah um who else have we not talked about Ke kevin's kind of a non-factor huh? kevin is like yet again kevin is fun to just like throw chaos into it every once in a while but he's absolutely a non-factor yeah Stray, Bergy, yeah. MJ. Yeah, we're getting we're getting down to the to the wire. Like there's not I know. Like, how many like how many more weeks do we have? Do we want, like when is the finale? Good question. I don't think they announced it. We're on episode six. I believe there's between ten and twelve episodes. I, okay. I, I I'm not positive. Um okay. I, I think they're filming the reunion next week. Okay. Um so not exactly sure, but but yeah, and then Dr. Will should be coming in soon, which will oh, be which yeah. was no that, big no that, big brother people there. That's supposed to wait, that is really funny. Is that supposed to be common knowledge? Or did they I saw a tweet that was like they mistakenly like released that trailer that like showed him, but like I feel like everybody knows that he's coming. So I know people think that, but like I knew that trailer was coming out. They had planned okay. that trailer to come okay. out. So like it's not a mistake. He's not there as a player. Um, they yeah. didn't reveal his role, but like I think it's something to do with a mission. I don't know he for is, sure. Uh, I wish he were there as a player. He is. I love watching him. <laughs> I, I mean, mean his, pod, his podcast with you was like truly maybe my favorite podcast. I, I listen to like eight podcasts every day during work and your that episode with you and him was like one of my favorite episodes of the year last year of any oh my of god. my podcasts thank you oh my yeah. god it was i didn't even know what to expect i thought he was going to be sort of closed because he's very private like right. with a lot of his life and i just he just gave me so much and i was just oh, it like it, it annoyed me because i was just like this interview is better than mine it's better than <laughs> anybody else's that they did with sharon it's so good like there is just nobody like this man you do not know what he is going to say next and it was so fun to listen to it was wild it was a wild ride for me too as, yeah. as someone who interviews people you never know where it's going to go and i did not know where that was going to go right um, i love it yeah but i'm excited to see him i'm definitely bummed that he are people Trishel will know who he is. Trishel will absolutely know who he is. Maybe Sandra, Sandra will. Parvati, I see. I feel like Sandra is definitely very entrenched in the like CBS reality world. I feel like Parvati is a little bit more removed from it. True. I think Sandra will definitely know who he is. I bet Parvati probably will be like, "Oh, I've heard of him at least." Hmm. I'm curious what you thought just overall as for you know obviously season one we had Rachel and Cody. This season, we have Janelle and Dan. What were your thoughts on the Big Brother picks this year for the cast? Oh, I thought they were great. Like, I think Dan and Janelle were very good picks. Like, Janelle is someone who, and yet again, like, Janelle stands do not come for me. I think Janelle is one of the most entertaining people to ever play. I think that Janelle's strategic brain is <laughs> not great, but also it doesn't matter because she is so fun to watch. And so I was very glad that Janelle was back. I, I feel that way about Kate too. Her reads are terrible. Oh, but like, oh, oh my God. My, a bunch of my <laughs> friends have been like, oh, so is Kate, like a bunch of my friends have not watched season one. And so they're like, oh, is Kate back because she was so good? And I'm like, no, <laughs> like absolutely not. No. Um, Kate is fun to win. The thing is like, you need to have some people like Sandra. I mean, Sandra's actually giving us really fun confessionals. 
But Sandra is like just kind of. She, actually, she had that fight with Janelle too. I was about to say that Sandra has been boring, which is wrong. It, which is I'm I'm mad at myself for even thinking that for a second. <laughs> but what I'm saying is Sandra is like holding her tongue a little bit. And someone like tonight at the round table, Sandra like bit her tongue. And Sandra was just like, I am voting this way because of the evidence. Whereas Kate was like more fun to watch. Yeah. Um, and Janelle and Kate are like that. It's like they're gonna say whatever. Like the only reason Sandra got into a fight last week is because Janelle like instigated it. And it's like Janelle is always going to instigate fights, and I love that about her. Um, and I just, I just love Janelle in general. Janelle, like when they left for their for filming, it was like the week that my mom passed away. And Janelle, literally from like her burner phone in Scotland, like sent me a text about like she was like, "I'm here, like filming the traders," and like I literally like asked for a phone so that I could like send my condolences to you, which was like so sweet and so kind. And it's like I feel like Janelle is seen as this like emotionless like fight starter and it's like no janelle is like a kind lovely person too yeah um, and she's always really fun to watch but like yeah boy, i'm rambling again a great casting yeah. season rachel i think is great casting god love him i don't think cody was meant for the traders i'm sorry um out of like all the big brother players that you could have chosen like i don't think that was the best pick but the other three i think are great yeah i think they wanted at first like Oh, let's pick two people who everyone likes, like right. Marie and Cody. Where now I think they're like, all right, maybe we don't. Well, do like that. Dan, like I think it would have been way more entertaining. I, and I think he would have done way better if Dan were beautiful. faithful. Like to be honest, I think like I think Dan like took this as like like I said, I just think he like thought he was going to be able to get away with his same tricks of like being this deceptive person. But I think like I think Dan could have done pretty well as a faithful, to be honest. I think it would have been fun to see him. I also understand, though, why people want to be traitors, because they have a huge advantage. So it's yeah, like, yeah. I I get why he wanted to be a traitor. But, and I'm sure he knows that, like, I would think he knows that people would assume he was a traitor anyway. I don't know. Right, that's so, the thing. It's like, but also it's like, that's why it would have been fun to watch him. Like, not, <laughs> it's like, like I said, if I were on the show with Dan and he were a traitor, or sorry, and he were a faithful, it would have been, like, fun to watch him, like, play differently because I really do think we would have seen different gameplay from Dan if he had been a faithful. That's true. I see. And I feel like he would have been way more vocal. Yes. Like, that's what I'm, that's what I'm getting at. I think he would have yeah. been much more vocal. And it's like a, like a bunch of my friends that do watch big brother are like, do you think Dan like had it in his contract and like wouldn't agree unless he was a traitor? And I was like, I wouldn't be shocked, but I think it would have been fun to watch him as a faithful. Yeah, it depends on how badly Peacock wanted him, which I'm, I think they probably wanted him pretty badly, but yeah. I don't know. I mean, how that like works. I said, like, <laughs> uh, like it's it was very thrilling that he was back. Like, yeah, I mean, he hasn't been on TV in over ten years. It's just fun. Again, even though he went home tonight, I enjoyed watching him. Especially this episode, I feel like he was really like, even though he was wrong, yeah. um, just seeing his little smirk and stuff is just oh. funny. Because I'm like, like, oh, that's Dan. It elicits such a strong response in me. Like, when I'm watching him do it, I'm just like, I can't stand you. But I'm also just like, <laughs> I'm so riveted by this. Yeah, you're like. Um, yes. Like, I remember that was, like, the entirety of me watching Big Brother 14. I was just like, oh, my God. And, the, like, yes. I, I think Dan is very fun to watch. Yes, I know. And so anyone who, you know, isn't familiar with his Big Brother game, I understand why you think he might be boring. From that perspective, maybe he is. But, like, tonight, you saw, like, inklings of him in confessionals. And I do think that was sort of the big brothery Dan that we saw yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Um, which I missed. So. <laughs> yeah. And it was very um, thrilling to have him back. Yeah. Yeah. Any, like, tell me, who from Big Brother would you like to see on the Traders? Oh, my God. Anyone um, else? I'm trying to think of, like, like, my thing is, like, we always get like it's like yeah this is no shade to him because i think he'd be great but people are like let's get josh martinez on there and i'm like josh martinez has been on every fucking show mm -hmm. possible it's like let's get some people in there that like only played big brother once or we haven't seen again to like give them we already know that josh is entertaining but it's like let's get someone in there and like give them a chance to like that's why like it annoys me when all the same people are always back for everything it's just like okay we get it they're good they're fun to watch but it, like, I'm sure there are so many people that are brimming to like get a chance to like do, you know what I'm saying? To play again or to do something who would also be really fun to watch. Like, like, like we didn't, I feel like when Josh first won, he wasn't that popular. And yeah. now since he's gotten to play other games, like I'm obsessed with Josh now. Like I didn't super love Josh on Big Brother 19, but now I love him. 
And yet again, I feel like I'm contradicting myself as well because I'm just like, no, I, I get it. it. And it's like, I would like, like, I weirdly would like to see Josh play, but I would like to see someone else get that Josh chance to like show us that they're really fun to watch and we've only seen them once, you know? I think that's like, totally fair. I feel like a Vanessa, like who we've only Ugh. seen play Big Brother once. Although it's like, I'm sure she's been asked to do these shows and she just like says no. At least if she's not being, that's a crime against like whoever is casting these. Um, oh my God, I'm trying to, I mean, it's like, I love Taylor. I would like, like yet again, I'm being boring because these are people that are always bad. I know. But it's like Taylor and Brittany, I think would be fun to see. Um, who are like some like schemers that like we like. I would love to see Paul Abraham. Oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Or like, I think like Caitlin Herman would be chaotic. I think oh, wow. that would be someone that would be fun to see. Um, who are like, I'm trying to think of like the last few seasons, like, or like, like a Sarah Beth from like Big Brother 23, Ooh. who like, I do think was really fun, who just like, we've never heard from again. It would be fun to see someone like that, you know? She could be a traitor. <laughs> yeah, right? Like she told America to wipe their ass with her Big Brother bucks. Like, I love that. Bring yeah. her back. You're so right. I, I gotta think more deeply because like I always skim the top of like the people I know and the people that no, that's, like, that's like yes, that's like all these castings, it's like always the same people. And it's just like there are like there are a lot of interesting people that might not win or that might not go to the end. Um I mean, yet again, I don't wanna ever sound like one of those people that's like I'm begging for you, like casting, please listen, I'm begging to be on a show. I think I would be great at the traders. And there are not many other shows that I would want to play, but I would absolutely like leave for two weeks and film the Traders in Scotland and come back. Um, I think you would be a good faithful or a good trader. I, I think you could Sharon, play I both. Agree with you. So and it's you, like the gay representation fun. on the Traders is lacking. It's like throw in like a savvy gay guy. Look at it like this. If I go back and I flop, okay, everyone is like vindicated and they're just like, see. Or if I go back again, I could like, I could become a Josh and everyone's like, whoa, like we didn't know that he had this in him or, you know, like. Yeah. And it's kind of like, so Josh had like a resurgence when he got on the challenge and everything and people started appreciating him more. Same thing. I feel like Nicole with Reindeer Games, yeah. sort yeah. of people are coming around on her. I think maybe it's your time, Andy. Yeah, I mean, I mean again, like, I, I also don't want it to sound like I, I actually would love to see, I love watching Josh. And so I just, that was a bad oh example for me to be like, stop bringing this person back to everything. But yeah, he's like, like not the, the problematic one, because like, he's fun to watch at least. No, he's yeah. so fun to watch. But I just, what I was, I was just trying to think of someone who's been on like so many shows, you know, or like, even, but it's like, they're on these shows because they are fun to watch. Like Rachel is another one, and, like Rachel's always fun to watch. And so I can't be too mad. When, like, it was kind of like Johnny Bananas. Like, I didn't really need him there, but... No, oh, my God. I was so happy that he went right away. Like, yeah. yet again, no shade to him as, like, a person, but he is such a camera hog. And I, like, just watched him on House of Villains. He's same. on the challenge all the time. I was like, enough! <laughs> no, same. Um, yeah, I was going to ask you how you think you'd do on the show, but I, you would... Everyone wants to go in as a trader, right? Because, like, you have more, like, would, statistically... I would, yeah, would want to be a... Yeah, I would absolutely want to be a trader. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, like, I feel like if someone who, like, keeps up with the reality world and, like, if they were in there, I feel like they would be like, oh, this guy's a little shysty. But, like, if I were in there with a bunch of people that didn't know me, I think I could do really well. That's true. And also, I, I wonder if they're going to continue the, the two big brother people or not. You know what I yeah. mean? Like... If you're in there with someone else, I, it, it's so dependent on the cast too. Yeah. Like who knows each other and all that stuff. Right. No, and that's the thing. It's like, it really is. Um, but I mean, this cast this season is such a dream. They've been, it's been, I mean, I've been so thrilled to watch it every week. Yeah. I, yeah. So as we wrap up, like for me, again, I say like very fun. I'm glad Dan came out of retirement. This was like a really fun, I was like giddy. Next, like you said, you were pacing. I'm like screaming at my uh, hey, screen. This was a thrilling episode. Like, it's great TV. And so, you know, Dan knows, I, I'm a huge Dan fan, but I also, he just he just couldn't pull it out. No. Um, it's, hey, it's okay. Everybody's <laughs> not great at everything. I know, I know. But it was it was thrilling TV, and I'm, I'm excited to see where it goes. I think Parvati's in trouble, but um, we'll see. We'll see what yeah. happens. Would you ever do rain, reindeer games, Andy? Curious. Yes, absolutely. You I would. would do for sure. Of course I would. Like yet again, like, like I think there are some people who sit on social media and they're like begging to come back. And I feel like that just makes me feel sad. And so I don't want to ever sound like that, 
But like, I am just saying like, life is good. I'm not going to be like mad if I am not asked. But if I were asked, I would yeah. be open to reindeer games and the traders. No, I think that's totally understandable. And I think you're not wrong. Like a lot of the people get the same calls. Like I'm happy they they brought out like, for example, like a Trishel who hasn't been on TV yeah. in so long. Like, I hope they continue that. But it's just um, like, look it again. I actually think he was fun to watch on reindeer games, but it's like Frankie Grande is the gay representation um, every time for everything and i'm just like as the only gay man that's won does that mean nothing like oh it's like frustrating sometimes no i i can see that and also like i, I wonder he has like a built-in fan base so i'm like did they just cast him because of that or like right. i mean i mean? i will give it to him i actually really thought he was fun on i thought the entire reindeer games cast except for cameron were very fun to watch <laughs> They were. It was, like, a good... And and the other thing is, like, I forget, and I know I'm a six, season 16 apologist, but, like, Frankie's not bad at Big Brother, either. Like, yeah. He's, no. He's not it's so bad funny, at it. Karen, I'm, like, such a season 16 hater. I know. But yet again, like, Hayden Voss is, like, one... Like, it's, like, I want to, like, upload a... Because I literally hang out with Hayden, like, every week. I want to just, like, upload a photo of us that's, like, me. I hate Big Brother 16. But, like, actually me. Like, a photo of me with Hayden. Like, I'm so fake. You should get a t-shirt. I'm going to send you a t-shirt. <laughs> um, well, Andy, it was so fun. Thank you for hopping on with me. Guys, thanks oh, for bearing with us. Always a pleasure. You're the best at what you do, girl. Thank you. And yes, I will be back with a Dan exit interview tomorrow, which I'm very excited about. We'll hopefully get some more answers about things. That's the other thing I will say real quick. The, they need to be longer episodes or, or something because there's we're missing a lot of conversations. Yeah, when I listened to your interview with Janelle, I was like, oh, it sounds like we missed a lot of stuff that was like, yeah. Yeah, there and there's so much like stuff that I want to talk about, like the meta game and like I think Janelle was saying like she was watching where the cameras were, like right. when people were in rooms. Like there's so much I want to get into, but you yeah. know, you can only do so much, but. All right, well, thanks again, and thank you, everyone. Just please like and subscribe, and I will talk to you guys later.